Welcome to a new edition of Harness Central. I'm Harold Howe here with John Vox, his new farm near Campbellville. And we're here to talk about Hemi Silster. Now, I think most people are well aware he won the good times the other night. But it's almost a Cinderella story. And at the same time, you never give up on him. You bought him for $19,000 at the Forest City sale. And uh, I, he paid for himself and a little bit more last year. But he was basically a grass rooter, but that was enough for you to carry him over. And I think a lot of people would be curious what he showed you to lead you to leave him with your son Matt through the winter as opposed to just selling him and going on to greener pastures. Well, first of all, Harold, I want to, a lot of people don't know that you were the agent for this horse. Yep. You ended up uh, signing a ticket for me, so. I made the bid because somebody wanted to go home and lay on the couch and watch TV. I just happened to be staying longer at the sale. Well, you did a good job, so uh, I got to give you the credit, no money. The... <laughs> that figures. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and I have to give Matt all the credit because, uh, you know, he he showed us, he did show us something last year, and uh, and we bumped him up, and he couldn't handle it, and it was more, it was mental, that he, the mental part he couldn't handle. Uh, physically, he was big and strong, and uh, he was good in the grassroots when he got his own way, but he couldn't make that adjustment, and, uh, and so Matt had him up here all winter, and I uh, raved about him, and it was likely his doing. Uh, that uh, started the payments on the good times. So. But, but just to back up, I mean, you're a great one to believe you don't be carrying stuff over without a very good reason mm -hmm. because it's just too expensive. And they're certainly not going to Florida with you. So what did he show it to that made you think he's a keeper? Well, you know, he had the size, had the gait, um, was a, you know, really sound horse. So, uh you know, he showed us flashes that, that he had some talent. So, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't like we were looking at a horse that was just a, a um, you know, just a barely a grass rooter. He was, I mean, I, I thought he could have been a gold last year. So Matt had him through the winter and got him ready for this year. And he came out pretty well in, in the uh, uh, sire stakes and looking like he's improved. But when you looked at the... Um, good times elimination. I mean, he was here at a Mohawk racetrack back and was lucky in some ways to get in there, but not nearly as lucky as he was in the final when things opened up for him and he wins the biggest race of his life. Yeah, I thought we had, I mean, we were 15 lengths uh, off at the, in the elimination and I thought, well, we might be able to get five of that. You know, he could maybe improve that much, but uh, you know, maybe uh, home home track advantage. Uh, you know, maybe paid off uh, being five minutes from the racetrack, so he isn't stressed out trucking. Uh, you know, there's lots of factors. Uh, you know, obviously uh, Jimmy's horses weren't right. Uh, Jimmy Tucker. Yeah. yeah, but that's you know, at the end of the day, that's why we race. And uh, I hope you had a couple dollars on him when he paid 155 to win. I had uh, nothing on him, but uh, I get some of the purse, so I'm all right with that. Okay. What's interesting on the night too? Your horse, he was only 19,000. He wins the good times for 233,000. Waukesha, she Hanover was a $23,000 yearling, wins the million dollar North America Cup. Physically inclined was a $4,500 yearling. He wins the North America Cup consolation. And there's been a few more we've written about recently that were hardly expensive. When, is it worthwhile as an exercise to even consider that when you think about buying yearlings next year or 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 is there something to be said for there being lots of bargains out there but you got to get lucky well you make your own luck i think a lot of times uh you know i'm sure those uh, you know the north american cup winner i mean those guys uh, spend a lot of time looking at uh you know the confirmation and the pedigree and uh, you know it's it, it, yeah, you got to be in the right spot at the right time, but uh, you know you got to be good to be lucky and lucky to be good. So, um, would you? I don't think you'd want to make a, a lifetime of buying, you know, forty-five hundred dollar yearlings. Uh, I think that somewhere down the road you would uh, you'd be looking at another job. Hemi um, sold for nineteen, but I know when you asked me to bid on him for you, you were thinking twelve, thirteen. This was two years after the announcement 
of the end of the slots at racetracks program. I guess why him, and why did you think, you know, he was in that 12 to 13 range and ultimately 19? Well, I had a sister, half sister, and then she had like a 55 hind end and 210 front legs, and uh, he was a, you know, a lot better in the front end. So, yeah, I priced him as a grassroot horse, and then, uh, you know, thought kind of grew on me. I mean, when we looked at him, I thought, geez, you know. And it wasn't a powerful sale. No, it wasn't. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, the prices were depressed. Uh, you know, maybe he sold in Harrisburg, he'd sell for 30. Uh, I don't I don't know. But, uh, uh, you know, Holiday Road wasn't that popular. So, you know, you factor all those things in, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, it's it, it's hindsight's 50-50 or whatever, but 20-20. Uh, he, uh, you know, he's obviously a bargain. And and Hemi today has a hundred thousand dollar or two hundred thousand dollar race in his pocket. Who knows whether he'll win another hundred thousand dollar race? But it'd have to be a stroke of bad luck if he doesn't have a financially productive year. And at the end of the year, if you decided to sell him, I mean, he's going to be a desirable horse for somebody. Or if you decide to keep him, he should. He has appearance of being a horse that could be a very productive racehorse for several years. Yeah, and, and, and you know what uh, What it shows, uh, uh, I mean, if we were looking at him as a, a, you know, a top grass, the difference between a top grass rooter and a gold horse, it isn't a lot in the time-wise, but it's quite a bit in the money. Uh, if, you're, if you're playing, if you can be in the top three or four in the, in the gold, as opposed to the top two in the grass route, there's quite a difference. And... Uh, and that's what we were hoping that he would step up to the next level, and you know, physically and mentally, uh, be able to play in the golds. And I'm hoping that he can. And if he can, uh, and it looks like he'll be able to, you know, his earning potential is, uh, you know, another zero on it. And, and your operate, he kind of is a nice fit for you because your operation now here at the old Glengate Farms at Campbellville is a heartbeat away from Mohawk, and I was at 20, 25 minutes from uh, Woodbine unless something changes, you're going to Florida again. Mm -hmm. Matt has to blow snow. He's going to be here with X number of horses, and Hemi, you know, could well be here and be a nice racehorse. Yeah, this this gives us a, an option to do that. Uh, I mean, from uh, from Peterborough driving in the wintertime to uh, to Toronto, or, you know, the, the idea of keeping a, a, an older horse wasn't all that appealing, but uh, being five minutes away at... You know, it sh certainly gives us another option. Right. And finally, the fact it was the good times, <laughs> named after you know your first prominent horse. It must have been kind of neat to win it. I mean, uh, I mean, it's it's not a biggest deal as having had good times himself to have made two million dollars, but it was kind of neat and a surprise, I think, genuinely for you to, you know, put your name on the trophy. Yeah, it's pretty special. I, you know. I wouldn't be where I am without without good times, and uh, you know he meant so much to our family, and uh, yeah, so it was it was pretty special. I, I mean, I always joked about uh, you know being able to uh, give the trophy to myself, and uh, I mean, I handed it to Vicky, got it, so uh, uh, so the, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty neat. Yeah. And the other thing I was going to say, just to wrap up here, I've said different times. I don't know how all you trainers aren't raving alcoholics. Stubborn Bell is in your barn, lays over the three-year-old trotting fillies. She's supposed to win the OSS gold. She jumps it off, you get nothing. Um, Hemi Silster is in the good times. He's, what's that, almost 80 to 1, and he wins it. I mean, you must just think, this game is mad. Well, it, it just goes to show you that, uh, you know, it, uh, anything can happen, and, uh, you know, good and bad. And if you, uh, you know, you persevere, stick it out, uh, you know, you hope the good things come along. Good stuff. Well, congratulations on a good weekend and uh, more to come. Thanks. Harold Howe with John Bax giving you the Harness Racing Edge.